Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you this little scene in charcoal, but the main focus will be on how to draw these massive clouds. Now this was requested by some of my viewers, but I don't always do requests, but this was something that I was already planning to do anyway. So I wanted to do a more detailed tutorial on how to draw clouds in charcoal. But before I show you the drawing process, I just want to bring you in a little bit closer so that I can explain a few important concepts that you need to understand before you can draw nice looking clouds. The first thing that you need to understand about clouds is that these are three-dimensional objects. You want to draw them so that you can show volume and shape and depth. And in order to achieve that, you will need to have a nice range of value, you will need to have contrast, and you also need to define edges properly. Now, uh, speaking of edges, if you look at the edge here uh, around these clouds, you will see that we have a sudden transition or a fairly clean edge, nice contrast between the cloud and the background. This is very important because you want to show uh, where the cloud ends and the background begins. So you need to have a good contrast there. The other thing that's also important is the overall shading of the overall shape. So you need to make a distinction between the lighter parts of the cloud and the darker parts of the cloud. For that, you need to understand where the light source is. In this case, the light source is coming from the left and from above. So you need to keep that in mind, which means that the right side and the lower side of this mass of clouds will be a little bit darker. And you can see that this is the case here. Now, once you've defined these larger relationships between the lighter sides and shadow sides, you can move in and define some of the smaller shapes. If you look at some of these smaller shapes, like for example, uh, this one here and here and here, you can see that they are lighter on top and that these lighter segments stand out against the darker bits, which means that this part of the cloud, of this mass of clouds, is sticking out or bulging outwards. So with the use of range of value and with the use of our erasers with which we create these areas of lighter value, we can make it look like this shape has volume and like these smaller shapes are sticking out. So these are some of the things that you need to remember before we start drawing. Uh, now we're going to move on with the drawing process and I'm going to show you how it was done. But first we're going to go over the tools. I'm going to be using charcoal powder a lot, but before I do that I just want to tell you about some of the other things. I'm going to use this charcoal pencil and a vine charcoal stick. I'm going to use some brushes and uh, tortillion for blending. And for erasing, I'm going to be using a kneaded eraser and a pencil eraser. I'm going to talk about all of these things in more detail a bit later, but for now, I'm also going to need an, uh, a sharpener, obviously. For now, uh, we're going to start working on this smaller size paper, and I'm going to do a simple sketch. When you're working on a sketch, when you're drawing landscape, the idea is to work out a nice, balanced looking composition and um, to give yourself an idea where you will place the elements. The central part of this drawing will be a large cloud um, which is towering upwards, kind of like a bunch of clouds stacked on top of one another. But uh, below that we'll have some trees and some hills. So first I defined the line of those trees and now I'm trying to define the shape, this large shape of a cloud. I'm drawing a slightly jagged edge and these large round shapes. You can modify these later, but for now, this will probably be good enough. <clears throat> After that, I'm going to use some charcoal powder, which I already mentioned. And you can buy charcoal powder. You can create your own by sharpening or grinding down some of your pencils or your charcoal sticks. I'm going to apply this with a brush and I'm going to move it around gently and I'm going to try to cover everything evenly. 
Now, why am I doing this with charcoal powder rather than charcoal pencils or sticks? I mean, you can do it with, with a charcoal pencil or a vine charcoal stick, but the idea is to avoid or minimize texture. With charcoal powder, there will be very few marks and you can create a very smooth background. Another advantage of this is that it will make erasing easier because you're not really pushing the charcoal into the paper that much and it will be easier to erase these lighter shapes. This is very important because we want to have lighter marks or lighter shapes against that darker background and of course those lighter shapes will be the shapes of our clouds. So in order for these clouds to show up we need to have a slightly darker background. Otherwise, they simply wouldn't show up. So contrast is very important. Now don't worry about the edges here. The edges here don't look very clean right now, but that's because I plan to smooth things out first, smooth this background a little bit using a larger brush now. First I used a smaller one, and now I'm using a larger one to make everything a bit smoother. And I'm adding a bit of charcoal powder here and there as needed. Now, once I finish with that, I'm going to start defining the edges of the cloud. But first I want to make sure that the, uh, that the sky looks smooth enough, that the distribution of charcoal powder is even enough. After that, I picked up a charcoal pencil and I went over this line of the horizon because I just wanted to have something slightly darker and more permanent there. So the next step uh, we still haven't defined the edges of the cloud, and that's fine. The next step is shading the larger areas of the cloud. So remember, my light source is coming from above and from the left, which means that the lower side, the lower portion of this mass of clouds, will be a bit darker, and of course the right side will be a bit darker than the left side. So again, I'm using that soft brush, and I'm using a bit of charcoal powder and blending it in those areas where I feel like uh, we would have a bit more value. But I'm also pushing some charcoal into those areas of lighter value as well because I need to have something to work with. I need to be able to create some lighter shapes and in order to do that I'm going to have to obviously I'm going to have to uh, add a bit of value to those lighter areas. I can't leave them completely white. But you can see that I'm staying consistent with my light source and that the lower side and the right side is generally a bit darker. So this is very important. First I define those larger shapes and now, after that, I can move in with the erasers to work on the details. And now I'm working on the details. Uh, first I'm going to use a kneaded eraser. The kneaded eraser that I'm using is a Faber-Castell kneaded eraser. You can use any other brand, but the key thing with kneaded erasers is that you have to keep reshaping them and remolding them, because otherwise they won't, won't uh, work properly. And you can shape them into any, uh, any shape you like. You can uh, create a teardrop shape, which is what I'm using most of the time here. You can create a blade-like shape. Uh, so that way you can achieve a bit more precision. But the advantage of a kneaded eraser here is that it doesn't leave any residue and it allows you to pick up charcoal gently, allowing you to create some very light shapes. And the kneaded eraser is really doing a good job here because uh, charcoal powder, when you apply it with a brush, is pretty easy to erase. It's very easy to remove. You can see that these marks that I'm creating with my kneaded eraser are almost completely white, so it's very easy to lift up if you didn't press too hard, naturally. But you can see that I'm you know, creating a slightly um, uneven, slightly jagged edges because that's, that's the way the edges of the clouds look. The overall shape is kind of round and sometimes they can be a little bit more fluffy and a little bit more wispy here and there, but uh, in general, the upper edge of the cloud is more defined against the background of the sky. There's a cleaner edge there, usually, and that's what I'm trying to achieve. So I'm, I, I'm going in uh, and I'm trying to clean up these edges with an eraser because I want to have a nice sharp transition between the, uh, between the cloud and the background. 
And when I say a clean edge or a clean edge to value, I'm, I don't mean a straight edge or an even edge or a smooth edge. I just mean that there is a nice contrast between um, the main subject, which in this case is the cloud, and the background. Uh, so first I'm going to define these edges because I want to have a nice clean edge and don't worry if some of these edges on the right are a, li are a little bit lighter than they ought to be I'm going to add a bit of value to them later but first I need to define the outer edge and then I can start defining some of the smaller shapes so once I have that uh, outer edge and the larger shapes defined in terms of the amount of value and the cloud is already looking pretty realistic as you can see after that we can start defining some of the smaller shapes so I use a teardrop shape needed eraser and I start lifting up a bit of charcoal to create some additional shape within this larger shape so this is something like a cumulonimbus cloud if I'm pronouncing that correctly uh, or it's something in between a cumulus and a cumulonimbus cloud because it's just beginning to tower up Anyway, it's a large mass of clouds, and I like the shape, which is why I wanted to draw it. And you can see that these lighter shapes that I'm drawing now, these uh, patches of lighter, uh, lighter value which I'm lifting up, these are starting to become shapes which are sticking out. Individual clouds or parts of the cloud which are sticking out, which are round and are bulging out, and they're catching more light from above. And you see, that is what the range of value does. It allows you to explain the shape to the viewer. It, it allows you to explain the volume, that, there, that something has volume and depth. If you want to further define some of these contrasts and some of these edges, you can also use a tortillion. A tortillion, when it picks up a bit of charcoal, is also a great drawing tool, not just a blending tool. So you can add it to, you can use it to add some gentle shapes where you wouldn't want to use a pencil because the pencil would be too dark and it would produce too much texture. So tortillions can be pretty good for that. And of course, I'm also going to be using brushes. Um, now I'm going to switch to the pencil eraser. And the pencil eraser that I normally use is a Kohinoor pencil eraser. It's like a rubber eraser and a pencil that can be sharpened. And uh, what I like to do with it, I like to uh, further clean up and define some of the edges. And the reason why I'm doing this with a pencil eraser and not with a kneaded eraser is not that I couldn't do it with a kneaded eraser, it's just that it's a little bit more convenient uh, because you can hold it and use it uh, like a pencil. But the disadvantage is that because it's a, it's a regular rubber eraser, it's uh, leaving a bit of residue, so I have to keep blowing that away and occasionally even cleaning it away, which can lead to some smudging. So I would recommend that um, you leave some of that residue and you can clean it up later with a kneaded eraser and don't worry about it too much because if you start erasing and then cleaning up immediately, you might actually you might actually uh, smudge some of the charcoal over those uh, lighter edges that you tried to create and that would kind of defeat the purpose of the whole process. So here as you can see I'm going in with a tutelian and just defining some contrast uh, or some transitions between some lighter shapes and darker shapes and you can see how some of these lighter shapes within this larger shape are starting to pop out which is what I wanted to achieve. So this is a process uh, which can take a little bit longer or, or maybe less depending on how much time you want to put into it and how detailed you want to make your clouds look. Uh, here these clouds will be pretty detailed so I'm going to take a bit of time to define all of these smaller shapes and I want to have, uh, I want to make it look like uh, the the cloud kind of has a rough shape, um, uneven surface, as it were, and that's why I'm gonna do a lot of additional work with a pencil eraser, going in, doing a lot of erasing, creating smaller shapes, defining a lot of these 
a lot of these uh, smaller shapes which are bulging out. And I'm going to do the same thing around the edges. I don't really know if the camera will be able to pick up on all of these things that I'm doing, but I think you'll be able to see most of it because, uh, like I said, the idea is just to make the whole cloud a bit more detailed, a bit more complex and obviously a lot more realistic in the process. Uh, but now you can also see that it was very important for us to define the relationship between the light side and the dark side first because that would be very difficult to do once you get into these details. But if you define those larger relationships first, then working on the details is a bit easier because you already have those larger values in place and you can focus on defining some of these smaller shapes. Uh, there's not that much contrast within this cloud. Clouds are mostly white. Not, they're not completely white. Some of them are darker than the others, obviously. It depends on the type of the cloud. It depends on the lighting and the positioning of the light source and things like that. But the thing is that it's a fairly light shape. So it's going to have some range of value, but it's not going to have a huge range of value. We're not going to have some pitch black uh, details on it obviously <clears throat> but the thing is and the reason why I'm stressing it this is that you'd need to have some range of value in order to express the shape to explain uh, to explain the shape to the viewer because if you don't have that then some of these lightest marks simply won't show up and you won't be able to see the difference between the um, between the areas of uh, lighter value and those of slightly darker value and if you don't see the difference between those areas well then you can't understand the shape of the cloud and if you don't see the shape of the cloud then you have a very simple looking cloud and that's not what we're going for we're going for a very complex large menacing looking towering cloud here uh, I'm going in with a brush here and there maybe softening some of these edges where I produced a little bit too much texture it really comes down to uh, whatever you want to create. It comes down to your taste and your idea. Um, another thing that you can do with a clean brush, you can lift up a bit of charcoal and create some softer transitions when you don't want to use an eraser. The eraser is probably the best uh, tool for creating lighter shapes, but if you uh, want to lift up just a little bit of value without actually using an eraser, you can use a clean brush, lift up a bit of charcoal and create a lighter shape which is maybe uh, not uh, not as light or maybe doesn't have as much contrast in, as some of the others. But it's up to you, like I said, and it's also up to you how much time you want to invest into, um, into refining these shapes because this process can take uh, even a couple of hours maybe or you can do it in a half an hour maybe even 15 minutes it's up to you but here as you can see I decided to take a bit more time now, this whole process uh, of the drawing of the cloud uh, was uh, probably over a half an hour maybe even 40 minutes I'm not really sure but I wanted to take some time to be able to explain the process to you and that's why a lot of this video will be in real time uh, because I want you to be able to follow along and understand uh, understand how this process goes and the way in which the tools are used. If you only have a kneaded eraser or if you only have a pencil eraser you can still pull this off uh, but I like to combine different types of tools. I like to use a variety of uh, erasing tools. I like to use a variety of blending tools. I just like to use different tools and try to see what their advantages are and use them in, in, uh, during, the, during the drawing process. I don't like to limit myself to just uh, one or two tools. But my main drawing tools uh, here, as you can see, uh, were mostly erasers. That's, that's the way it is when you're drawing lighter shapes. Your erasers are your main drawing tools. Normally people think of erasers as tools for cleaning up mistakes or correcting mistakes. When you're drawing realistic things in charcoal, uh, your erasers are, 
are your drawing tools. And when you're drawing lighter shapes, these are your main drawing tools. Of course, another way to um, draw lighter shapes is to reserve the white space by not covering it in the first place. But sometimes it's difficult to avoid doing that, so uh, you have to use erasers. In addition to these drawing tools, I also used uh, some vine charcoal and I will also be using a charcoal pencil a bit later. But as you can see, for establishing those larger areas of darker value, I first used charcoal powder. You don't have to use charcoal powder, you can use charcoal sticks or vine charcoal or even your charcoal pencil. But like I said, in my opinion, that would probably produce a bit too much texture, so you might want to avoid that. And now I'm going to move on to this foreground where I'm going to draw some trees and uh, and a hill to the right. So I'm going to be very complex and I'm going to go over this part a little bit quicker. A little bit more of it will be in time lapse rather than real time. And I hope you don't mind because this tutorial is focusing mainly on the clouds. So as you can see I'm uh, doing uh, very short circular motions and already trying to create some suggestions of tree trunks and branches of trees. I don't really know if some of these will be visible in the end, but I don't really care. I just want to give myself an idea about the overall structure of these trees and the, and the overall shape. What I want to create is something that kind of looks like a dark canopies of distant trees and in order to achieve that I need to create a nicely realistic looking shape and realistic looking texture and to create that texture I'm simply uh, doing uh, what I often refer to as allowing the pencil to work for me basically I'm dragging it over the paper allowing it to produce its own texture and using short uh, circling, circular or back and forth strokes and that way I create small marks that kind of resemble the texture of foliage as seen from a distance. Now as for this hill, or this mountain here, I want to create some variation in the value here. I want to make it look like, look like some parts of that mountain are bare and rocky, while others are covered with woods. So I'm going to cover some of them with more value and others with a little bit less. I'm using a tutorial to refine the uh, the overall shape of these trees here and maybe soften the texture a little bit because I don't want too much texture, just a bit uh, just to entertain the eye and to trick it uh, into thinking that I've that, that they're looking at something very very detailed and a brush is going to be a very useful tool for blending here because the brush allows you to preserve a lot of the texture you've created but at the same time it softens things, it, it makes things a little bit darker. So because I can't draw every single detail and every single branch or every single leaf what I want to do is use this uh, trick, uh, this scribbling motion where I produce uh, some random texture and that way I create an illusion of detail and when I go over it with a brush, I make everything look a bit darker and a bit softer uh, so that a lot of that ugly texture gets softened and starts to appear a bit more realistic. Now later I can go in and add a bit more value here and there or a bit more texture here and there depending on what I want to achieve. But you can see that even in this initial stage where I'm laying down the initial amount of value and texture, I'm actually already putting down some indications of some lighter shapes and darker shapes where maybe there is a little bit more shadow in between some of the individual trees or the canopies of those trees and maybe uh, uh, on the parts of those trees which are uh, further away from the light source. And you can see that the mountain is starting to receive a more realistic look and I can also add some trees also some uh, canopies of the trees in front of those uh, in front of those hills in front of that mountain just to create uh, some additional feeling of depth uh, like I said I'm going to go over this part of the drawing a bit more quickly because I've already done a lot of drawings on how to draw trees and foliage and things like that 
Now I want to remind you that if you want to see longer videos <coughs> and additional content, you can check out my Patreon. On my Patreon you can find uh, many, many dozens of uh, full-length narrated videos where you can observe the drawing process in real time and you can follow along and you can enjoy much more detailed explanations both about the drawing tool and uh, drawing tools and the drawing technique. As you can see I'm kind of wrapping things up on this uh, lower part of the drawing because I'm removing the tape around the corners and uh, filling in those corners and uh, putting down some finishing touches in those areas and uh, also trying to finish the work in this right corner uh, right uh, lower corner of my drawing like I said this was a slightly smaller size drawing I don't know the exact size but you can see that it's not a very large sketch uh, but it's still a pretty detailed nice looking scene it's something that you can do for practice now I already told you about my tools I just want to remind you to subscribe if you haven't already and also don't forget to check out my other videos I have lots of other stuff whether you like landscape or drawing portraits or wildlife uh, there's lots of content in there um, also don't forget to give me a like and comment anyway I'm wrapping things up here on this lower part of this little drawing and I'm just gonna put down some finishing touches using a pencil eraser maybe put some indications of um, tree trunks and tree branches not many of those are needed because most of them are obscured by the canopies of the trees and all the foliage so I don't really need to do too much work there I can also uh, go over some of the tops of those trees maybe make them stand out a little bit more these are just some of the finishing touches and it's really up to you how detailed you want to make this uh, but this is a relatively simple scene with a lot of nice contrast. I like the contrast between the stuff in the foreground and the background. Uh, when you have a very dark foreground against a lighter background that can create a very nice looking effect. I softened some of the textures a little bit uh, with a brush and now I'm just going to remove the rest of this tape and uh, finish these corners. I normally skew my drawings with a bit of tape and once all that is done uh, I'm going to do a little bit of additional cleaning up with the kneaded eraser because while I was refining some of the edges of, of some of these lighter parts of the cloud um, the pencil eraser left a bit of residue so I'm just cleaning up some of those bits and cleaning up a bit of that residue I don't want that there and also making sure that these lighter portions really stand out um, just dabbing a little bit making some final adjustments here and there but I'm pretty happy with the shape overall I'm just gonna wrap things up and put my signature in the lower right corner as I normally do and I draw my signature with a pencil eraser And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope that my little tutorial on drawing clouds in charcoal was useful to you or that it was entertaining to some of you. I'm going to do a few more landscapes very soon. So I'm going to see you in the next video. I want to thank you for watching. Don't forget to check out my other videos. And that would be all for now. Bye.